My name is Alex Sorgen. I'm an Ansible Solution Specialist, and today I'm going to talk about Ansible and how it fits into security automation. Since security can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, let's clarify what we mean when we talk about security automation. So security automation is specifically designed for Ansible around your security response tools. So things designed to respond to cyber attacks, whether that's from the privilege access management side, your firewalls, your intrusion detection systems, your security event coordinators, all of that falls under security automation. This is not focused on patching or vulnerabilities or compliance for your operating systems for your applications. Though Ansible can perform that, that is not what we're focused on when we talk about security automation. So what can we do in terms of security automation? Three main things that we like to focus on, first being investigation enrichment. So in many cases, I probably have a lot of different log sets that I can pull from, but I'm not always sending to some sort of correlation source all the time. That'd be a ton of data, and in many cases, it's not the most efficient use of my time and of those logging aggregators. So if I determine that investigation is required, I can run Ansible to pull those particular log sets, set them up as a source in something like QRadar at the time of need, and then easily remove those sources once that investigation is complete. I can also go through the process of updating my alerts, my searches, my signatures that might help me detect specific threats. So maybe I need to update something inside Snort to detect a possible threat. And then once I've determined that something is a threat, I can respond to that particular incident by removing that particular threat, blocking it, quarantining a machine. So maybe I need to update something in my firewall to actually block that particular IP address because we've determined that it's a threat. All of that can be handled from Ansible, but now I'm able to do that across multiple domains, multiple teams, and multiple technologies, which is really the big benefit of Ansible. So I've got an environment set up today that leverages the combination of a few different technologies. So I have Palo Alto as my firewall, I've got Snort running as my intrusion detection system, and then I have QRadar running from my security standpoint to be that log aggregator and offense determiner. And then I've got Ansible to link all these different pieces together so I can see exactly what's going on and update my logs and then respond to that particular threat. So at a high level, what I'm going to run through in this demonstration is I'm going to already have an attack going against my Snort host. It's going to be a, a basic web attack. I'll see that those particular logs are coming into the firewall and into my intrusion detection system. I'll want to get more information into QRadar so I can decide what to do. I'm going to update a particular signature on my Snort system, and then that will generate an offense that I can respond to if necessary, or I can determine it's a false positive and go from there. So let's run through a quick demonstration to see how all these different pieces can run together. So jumping into the demonstration, I'm logged into my Palo Alto firewall. And as you can see, I'm getting quite a bit of activity from a single source to, in this case, my web application, which is also running my Snort server. And then checking the access logs, I can see I'm getting quite a bit of activity. So it's now time for my security analyst to start looking at the log sources, see what's going on. So as of right now, I have no log sources configured, so I can't really start doing that deep dive. So that's where the automation platform comes in. And as you can see, I already have jobs available to enrich my QRadar logs in Palo Alto as well as Snort. So I'm gonna launch both of those job templates to make sure that's properly set up. So I can start deep diving into what the issue may be. This will give me a lot of information about whether there actually is a threat already and if Snort's able to get that information. And then maybe based on what the particular analysis is, I may need to dive a little bit deeper and possibly create a new rule inside Snort so I can actually determine if this is a threat or not. Fortunately, I've got all of that process automated now, so I don't have to worry about logging into the Snort server. I don't have to worry about logging into Palo Alto. I don't have to worry about logging into QRadar. It's already set up so I can very quickly respond to this particular question, this particular potential threat, and these jobs are now running in parallel, optimizing my ability to investigate a particular issue and start seeing is there a larger issue at bay? And then I can look at, based on more accurate information, should I respond to this particular incident? So it's gonna go through the process across both of those particular applications, and then I'll start to see inside QRadar, those log sources will show up. So as you can see, my Snort log source is now there, and then very shortly I'll also get my Palo Alto log source so I can start deep diving into those potential issues. 
So most likely because I don't have a particular rule set in Snort at this point to possibly detect this web attack, because at this point I just have the generic rules that are part of Snort, I most likely won't see anything when I dive into that. And I've got that capability to see all the particular rules. So if I do wanna see what is available to me from a Snort rule set, I can create, I can remove, or I can verify Snort rules. So I can actually launch a template again not filtering on any rules to check all of the rules that are available to possibly identify an attack. So I know now that I've got my Palo Alto log source here and I should start seeing in my log activity that something should start popping in for Palo Alto. So I can see that I'm getting, you know, some firewall session closed for that IP address of 208229, but I don't see anything popping in at this point for Snort because I haven't created a rule for it. As you can see, as I'm running this verify snort rules job, it will tell me all the rules that are available. And at this point, I don't have a particular rule set up for web attack, so it's not going to pop in. So it's a very easy to get, again, all of the different snort rules. I've got quite a bit in here, though I don't have anything specific for that. So as I start looking into as a security analyst, well, let's see if I potentially have a rule violation. So I'm gonna run this job to create a snort rule which I've already pre-created, you know, trying to get URI content of web attack simulation. All of this is already set up for me, but I could have the user fill that in at time of run, leveraging the survey capability. And this will go through that process of actually creating this rule on my stored server so I can start to see in Q radar, is this a larger issue that I may need to take action toward and see if it actually creates an offense inside Q radar? Because as of right now, I don't have anything from Snort coming in. I also don't have any offenses that have been generated because at this point it is just something coming into my firewall. I don't have a necessarily a reason to take action at this point. So I've gone through the process again of managing that snort rule and restarting snort for that change to take effect. So now I should start to see because that is a particular offense. I should start to see eventually that coming in that, you know, snort is detecting a particular issue because that happens to meet my particular um, rule. And as you can see, I'm starting to get the snort arsis log source coming in, and that should also generate an offense because I have that specifically tied to an action. So as it goes through and verifies is based on what the payload is that's coming from snort, it will also generate an offense. So again, it keeps track of all that information so I don't have to worry about how is this generating that capability? What am I getting from snort? What am I getting from Palo Alto? I can take that information, have Q radar go through its offense list that had been previously created. And then once it determines that, yes, this is a concerning issue, go through the process of actually creating an offense so I can respond to it. So I actually do have an offense now. It has actually met my IDS message capability. So I need to know, you know, maybe what's going on or I'm not that concerned about it, but this has already popped up as an issue. I can then decide to take action. So if I wanna look deeper into it, I can. But in this case, I've decided, yes, this is a threat and I wanna to respond to it. Once again, fortunately, because I do know what's coming in from Palo Alto, I know the exact IP address, I could actually go ahead and block that particular or drop that particular IP address. 208 and 229 is my host and destination. I can once again verify that that is the case from my Palo Alto logs. Again, you can add in filters if I wanna specify just what Palo Alto is providing. But in this case, I'll just wait for it to come back so I can see 208 with destination of 229. So I'll go through the process of dropping that. That will very quickly make the change on my Palo Alto device. And now that threat has been eliminated without ever needing to log into those particular devices. Obviously you can set up automation to automatically respond to different things. But in this case, I'm at least streamlining the process to connect to three different technologies all through Ansible Automation with most of the playbook hidden. So all I have to do is as an end user provide very few specifics to take care of the particular process. So in this case, update the IP address to drop and the specific address that it's going to. So very streamlined in terms of this process. While it doesn't take that many button clicks inside Palo to do so, I don't have to worry about that process. So I can already see my policy is being changed and that particular item is actually being changed to drop. So everything from 208 to 229 will drop. And as this goes through the process, I will no longer see snort coming through. I will just see that yes, those logs are being dropped, but that's it. So a very easy way to see what's going on in my environment, make changes to my firewall based on 
enriched logs directly from the sources that they need. And then obviously I've got playbooks already built to go back through the process once I'm done with this. While I no longer need those enriched log sets, I can then very quickly remove those so I'm not sending all kinds of logs to my QRadar instance. As you start looking into where can I go next, how can I learn more, the Ansible blog has quite a few links that walk through where Ansible fits in the security realm. And then we walk through the three use cases that we talked about earlier, and it provides some specific playbook examples of how I can work through incident response, endpoint protection, and threat hunting. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about Ansible and how it works with security automation.